these are basically um, prediction cards and this is going to be your uh, spiritual advice okay so I've done this spread before and um, I like the way that you know it, it just makes it a little bit easier for me so I'm re, uh, doing I'm, I'm reverting back to this spread for the beginning of the year because I think it might be helpful for you guys and I also um, using this deck again so first of all what we have here Prince of Cups this is an, uh, a water sign so this is a Pisces a Cancer or a Scorpio somebody that you are dealing with heavily it could be male or female because the cards are not gender specific and what it denotes to me is there is going to be some major transformation happening in this person's life it's linked up here with the judgment card there is going to be excessive uh, communication there's going to be kind of like this person is reaching out to you they're trying to figure out where you've been they're trying to figure out what you're up to so I feel like there's this exciting energy surrounding the communication between the two of you for some of you this is like an ex-partner that has been trying to reach out to you and they're trying to figure out where you are okay so Pisces Cancer Scorpio Sun Moon or rising for others, this is somebody that is hitting a period of, of uh, tumultuousness in their own lives. They're, they need advice. They need guidance. They need some type of a reassurance that they're on the right path. And they need something from you in terms of like being able to help them build, being able to help them grow, being able to make sense of a situation for them. A lot of the times, I know it sounds unfair, but you guys... Uh, tend to be the uh, the the handyman in your relationships okay people tend to cling to you because you're always seen as the anchor the pillar of strength and stability and they come to you when they have problems they come to you when things need fixing and so I feel like this is what's coming in as well and I'm feeling like this is a person that's coming to you for your guidance for your uh, expertise because they're at a point where they're completely lost for many of you this is a family member that is experiencing some type of a family upheaval even some type of a relationship family drama and they're trying their hardest to figure out a fair viable solution so that they can move forward I also feel this might be residual energy um, from last month back in uh, December because I felt like the same energy for you guys when I did the general reading for last uh, last month okay so I do see extensive communication with this person and I'm also sensing as well you know they they have the best intentions but their energy as a um, this is a knight the knight of cups their energy is still very young a little bit naive a little bit starry-eyed and um, I do feel there might be some issues when it comes to dependencies substance abuse dependency issues um, you know like somebody who blames other people rather than looking at how their actions contributed to a situation so I feel like you're dealing with somebody that has these characteristics okay and they're gonna require a lot of communication from you um, I honestly believe that you want to exercise you know a little bit of um, maintaining clear boundaries in this situation because I, I just don't feel like it's going to end with just one conversation where you tell them what they to do or you give them advice and they do it. I feel like it's an ongoing enabling thing where they're clinging to you constantly because they don't know what to do. And also um, giving them advice is not going to be the end of it. They're not just going to take your advice and that's going to be the end of their dilemma. OK, so maintaining your distance and maintaining your boundary, I feel like it's going to be uh, crucial for you. Uh, next up, we have here the seven of wands. This is a card about conflict. This is like defending your territory. Um, making sure that people know where they stand with you maintaining your distance as well and kind of like demarcating you know in in, in the sand like you, you don't cross over these lines you don't cross over into my territory so really maintaining your stance and putting your foot down about you know certain ideas certain beliefs that you have and defending your beliefs vehemently um, it's linked up with the nine of swords and the nine of swords is about stress it's about kind of like a little bit of guilt that you're feeling as well so if there are arguments that break out as a result of you know uh, energies or dealing with people for this month it's really important for you to first of all stand up for what you believe in right we need to clearly demarcate where we stand and what we believe in 
And I feel like some of you are doing this in a way that might be a little bit harsh. And so at the end of it, you start to feel a little bit guilty and you start to, you know, think about this in terms of, did I really say that in the, the most tactful way? Did I hurt some other people's feelings? You can be very, very blunt as well when you're dealing with other people and some people who are a little bit more on the sensitive side, they can take it as a huge slight. They can take it as, you know, they can take it the wrong way. So I feel like if this is what you're dealing with, you definitely want to, you know, um, tone down when it comes to, you know, defending your territory, defending your beliefs and being a little bit more, I want to say impersonal when it comes to your approach. Okay. So that means rather than saying you did this, you did that, I, um, you might want to generalize it and saying that, you know, some people are like this, other people are like that. So I feel like make depersonalizing things, you know, making things less personal and making things less um, confrontational is going to, it's going to give you um, more leeway to operate and to get your point across because, you know, once people feel attacked, they're going to start taking things personally and that's when their defenses go up and they stop listening. So I feel like there is going to be a lot of, um, there, there will be situations where you're constantly called in to do some type of damage control, I feel for many of you, uh, where somebody keeps messing up and you have to come in to be the fixer upper. And I'm also feeling like they're happening at very um, inopportune times where you might be busy with something else. You might be wrapping up your own projects and somebody who's kind of, I want to say, not very good at what they do, they make a mistake and they keep making the mistakes over and over and over again and you want to give them the benefit of the doubt but it's really it's really starting to take its toll on you and it's really grating on your nerves and you're also sensing as well you know if this person is really incompetent do we want to keep them on board so i feel like there is a major major ethical a dilemma here where you don't you want to give people the benefit of the doubt you want to give them second chances to rectify their mistakes but if it happens over and over and over again in a practical and pragmatic way you know is it a good idea to keep them on board and to constantly um I want to say like jump in and fix their problems for them. Are they really learning? Because you're hoping that they'll learn, but it doesn't feel like they are because they keep making the same mistakes. So next up, we have here the Ace of Pentacles. So this is a very, very big new job for many of you. Um, so this, once again, it's a, an, a job, okay? And it's basically a gift from the universe that you need to nurture in order for it to grow and in order for it to work and provide that longevity and provide that stable revenue stream for you. So this is overall a very, very good card that basically means you're in the process of building something great, building your um, financial foundation, building your professional network, building your professional credibility. It does require a lot of hard work, mainly because in the pentacle suit, things grow really, really, really slowly and things require a tremendous amount of effort. You know, you need sunlight, you need water, you need um, when you need the right condition in order for things to thrive from a little seedling. Right. So it's really asking you that, you know, you have this opportunity and you need to be really patient with it because it's going to grow and it's going to take a sweet time. In the meantime, what you're stuck with here with the King of Swords, this is basically indicating having to form some type of a long term strategy so that you can make this grow for you without having to waste a lot of time tending to it. OK, so this means, you know, what condition does it need so that I can put that in place? What is the and if it's a job for many of you and I feel like it's a job, if it's a job, you want to think about like. How can I streamline the, the work processes so that I am a lot more productive than other people? So thinking in terms of like um, efficiency, thinking in terms of like um, in, in a more practical terms, like what can be done differently here? What can I innovate? What can I streamline? Uh, 
in this work environment so that I can stand out from my peers. So I feel like you have a lot of strategizing to do. You have a lot of reorienting your priorities, shifting your priorities as well, and tackling multiple problems. So I feel like many of you who are working right now employed, you're in a very innovative uh, environment. There might be a lot of technology that you're relying on, um, technology in terms of like having to communicate with people from afar, having to communicate through... Uh, tele, uh, teleconferencing, Skype conferencing, you know, some type of a long distance communication. You are also, this King of Swords usually deals with like somebody who's a consultant or somebody who's an expert in their field. So I feel like there will be an, um, an increase when it comes to your client base, when it comes to consultation fees, reworking your schedule or, you know, raising your rates, raising your price or even demanding, you know, um, some type of a bonus or like a sign in bonus or a commission or or just a bonus for yourself because you're in a field that you're where you're like an expert and you're highly sought after. I'm also sensing as well, um, you have here an air sign, so Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra in your work environment. And this person, when you, if you can look at this person, um, I, I want to say like, you know, there's more than meet the eyes, okay? So I feel like r at first glance, they're a little bit like kind of abrasive, difficult to connect with. And they have a little bit of a challenging stance about them, okay? You're going to say something and they're going to ask you why. And the thing about air sign is they don't ask because they want to undermine you. They ask because they're curious and they want to know. And in particular, they want to know about why you believe or why you think the way that you do. And they're curious as to how you arrived at your conclusion. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody that their energy feels to me to be a little bit kind of challenging and abrasive, but they're, they don't mean any harm. And I honestly feel like if the two of you collaborate, you can make tremendous strides, okay? I feel like a very similar pattern in the way that the both of you think. You're very linear and very logical. And I feel like if the two of you get together, you definitely can... Um, come up with some great ideas. If it's a partnership, it can work out tremendously well for you. So I feel that this is somebody that can really challenge you to your, to become, you know, more. This is also somebody that you can greatly bounce ideas off of. They have a little bit of a challenging demeanor, but I feel like deep down, they're uh, very solid, very reliable, and com incredibly, incredibly intelligent, okay? So I feel like there's a lot of admiration between the two of you, even though you might not have a close buddy-buddy relationship, but there's still, like, uh, admiration for each other's uh, intelligence, for each other's work ethics, and each other's, um, I, I want to say, intelligence. So it, it looks very, very good, okay? The last thing coming through, we have here the... Alchemist. So this is the Magician and the Queen of Wands. So let me talk about this. The Magician, this is a card about a student, somebody who is learning how to incorporate all of their skills. So I feel like many of you, you might be going back to school. You might be going through some type of a training program. You might have to do some type of on-the-job training as well with this Ace of Pentacles. So it signifies to me having to learn something that is brand new and having to kind of put your thinking cap on and think and behave like this King of Swords where you're emotionless and you're, you're going to have to solve problems using pure logic base systems okay so many of you are probably on a training course learning new things in your work environment uh, perusing through training manuals um, protocols procedures trying to figure out what's the best solution trying to figure out what's the um the the previous you know uh, the the what's the previous situation that require this same um it's like What's the pre when was the last time this problem happened and how did the person in charge solve the problem? So I feel like you're looking at previous decisions to make sure that, you know, you're in alignment with what you need to do now. So 
for those of you who are students, we have here the Queen of Wands. This is you having kind of like a very uh, large following in your training group or in your school or in your class. So I feel like you're going to be quite popular. You're going to be quite sought after and you're going to, going to as well uh, be able to demonstrate a lot of how to like apply, you know, uh, theory to practice. Um, you're also going to be a little bit in the limelight where you're going to have to figure out how do I work with this solution given all the information that I know. So I feel like you and this Queen of Wands, this is a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, possibly in a training environment or possibly somebody who's training you or who's overseeing the work that you're doing or who's monitoring your training progress or your progress in general. And this is a really intelligent person and they can help you places, get places so they can help you greatly in uh, with enhancing your knowledge, okay? So I feel as if the interaction between you and this person, it's very, very strong, but um, you're, you yourself are very, very independent. So I feel like there is a little bit of an ego clash here. They might want to micromanage a little bit. They will, might want you to open up a little bit more about what you're struggling with or what you're doing, whereas you want to be left alone. So I feel like if this is somebody that's directly over you, like a supervisor or a boss or something like that, um, you want a little bit more space and they're kind of micromanaging and they're kind of hovering over you or like looking over your shoulders. They don't mean any harm, but I feel like they're a big distraction. They're looking for more fun and stimulation and excitement while you're looking to learn things, you're looking to be immersed in your craft and you don't really have time to entertain their whims. Okay. So I'm also sensing as well, there might be a little bit of attraction. It, it seems to me like it's one sided. Um, attraction in the work front or in the, the academic front, okay? So it seems to me like um, there's attraction, they, they like you, but there's something here about you um, having being occupied or having your thoughts elsewhere, okay? So the last three cards here will serve as your spiritual advice and they're read together. We have here the Tower, the Ace of Swords, and the temperance card. Let me talk about this first because this screams out to me time management. The temperance card, um, this is a Sagittarian energy and with Sagittarian energy what it does is that it makes us overestimate. Sagittarius are great overestimators, great exaggerators. It makes you um, overestimate the amount of time that you have. Oh, I'll do that another day. I'll, you know, clean it up on the weekend. I'll have time for that later, 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 later. And so there is this rampant need for procrastination. And I feel like you need to be really, really aware of what you're doing. And you need to get things kind of like lined up all in a row so that you can, you know, be more productive with your time so that you're not living in these delusions that there's going to be more time at a later date or at a later time, okay? Um, what happens is with the temperance card, it can also lead to overindulgence, okay? Overindulging in food, wine, the good life, um, superfluous spending, spending out um, beyond your means. So for many of you who might have landed a good job, I feel like it's providing, it's like... Um, boosting you up on the socioeconomic ladder. So that means right now you have a good job and you're just like, oh, I have all this money and I'm going to find ways to use the money. So overindulging in buying things, you know, exceeding your credit card limits and thinking that, oh, I have a good job now. I can get whatever I want and the job is going to be stable. You want to be very careful about that because what it's going to lead to is this tower situation where everything has been built on false premises. Everything has been built on a very unstable, uh, corroding um, foundation where you might have also told yourself these things will be okay there's another day there's always more time I can always fix it I can go always go back to it and it proves to be problematic down the line so the advice here is you know the ace of swords which is about truth it's about cutting out excess it's about streamlining and thinning out areas of your life that have not been serving you. So a lot of the times, this can also indicate getting yourself a lot more disciplined, losing weight, 
decluttering your environment, figuring out what you don't need anymore, having a very minimalist space so that you can concentrate. Okay, because I feel like this is the month where you have a lot of things coming in. There is opposition in the work environment. There's learning. There's new work responsibilities as well. And there's family situations. So you have a lot of things hitting you all at once in all areas of your life. And so the last thing that you need is to be cl uh, clouded and to be in procrastination mode and to operate like this where inevitably you know things are going to come crumbling down it's like that house of cards is built on faulty foundation and it's going to come crumbling down so the advice is is here to be very very honest with ourselves and to figure out you know capricorns you have good insights you know some of the areas in your own life that you need to work on but it's really hard to get you to that point where you start making a change right because you are very stubborn and as an earth sign as well uh, very, it's a very slow moving, resistant to change type of an energy. And so what they're really saying here is exercise, you know, more on the Sagittarian traits of expansion, of um, grabbing new opportunities as they come in and being able to also uh, not fear change, okay, but embrace it. So I feel like you have some major, major reshuffling uh, things that you need to do and you know cutting out excess cutting out the fat cutting out things in your life that are kind of like weighing you down like I feel like physically weighting you down physical belongings or even you know on your body whatever's not working try to you know leave it out of your consciousness okay try to leave it out of your body so we have some 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 big things that are happening here and the major theme for you guys is don't procrastinate, okay? Get things done in a timely manner. Uh, it's going to be a busy month. I'm not going to lie, Capricorns. You have a lot of things on your plate and you have a lot of things that you need to attend to. Finances looks very stable. And so, you know, it seems to me like that's one of the areas that's really stable right now. And that's going to help everything else. So keep at it, okay?